Hey, and welcome back to another episode of Sekiro. And we are taking on the drunkard boss again, as we are doing the purification ending. So for starters, we'll sneak underneath the veranda here, past the guys out the front. And there are three purple ninjas on the roof, so just be careful with that. So we'll sneak all the way across here, and um, we'll head on down to the lake. And we don't have that NPC anymore for co-op help. But you'll see the drunkard again, and this time he's got a sidekick ninja friend there. But what we're going to do is take out this little bow and arrow dude here. Now that's obviously going to grab their attention now. So what we're going to do now is run away like cowards. No, we want to coerce them down to the lake here. Get them to follow us a bit. Drunkard and his little ninja buddy will come down. And we're just going to head on back. What I'm make, obviously trying to do here is um, make them turn around and walk away. So I can do a, a stealth death blow. Now you can see the boss health bar at the top left there when it disappears. Sometimes it may not be safe to head on back when it does disappear, they'll attack again. So what I normally do is um, head on all the way back to the idol. And the music, which you can hear now, will start to fade down. Now when that music fades down, it's pretty much safe to head on back. So we'll just stop right here and wait for the music to fade down like it is now. Okay, it's faded down so we can head on back. So we'll sneak on underneath the veranda again. Now, sometimes that third ninja up on the roof can jump down and he'll jump back up again. It's up to you if you want to do a puppeteer move on him. He'll just take out the other ninjas and the guys on the ground there. But um, on this occasion he doesn't, so we'll sneak on past and head on back towards the drunkard and his little ninja buddy. Now you can see in the distance there, drunkard is heading on back to his starting point. He's already lost interest in us, even though we killed his little bow and arrow friend right in front of his eyes. So we'll sneak on up. And uh, we want to do a death blow on his ninja friend, but sometimes if he's not following behind the drunkard, he's already up front there. So we just need to wait for the drunkard to head on back to his starting point. And then we can run up on his little ninja buddy there and do the death blow. So here we go. Now what actually happens here is I accidentally do the puppeteer move on him. I really wanted to kill him, because then we can just run away and have the uh, drunkard lose interest in us again to deliver the first free death blow after killing the bow and arrow guy here. So now that we've accidentally possessed his little friend, we might as well just have a bit of fun and watch him fight it out with some popcorn. You can get involved if you want, get a few wax in on him. Now, basically, you just want to not get hit by the person you puppeteer because you can get hit by them. You can also easily kill him, which I probably should just do that anyway, because we want to progress this where we want the uh, attention of the drunkard to follow us down to the lake again and lose interest. So what will happen next is um, I just realised what I should have done, so I'll take another swig of my health bar here and uh, I'll head on back down to the lake. So we'll head on down, wait for the music to die down and his health bar to disappear. So we can deliver the freebie death blow on the drunkard. So you can see the ninja up, up on the roof there, those purple ninjas. Just be careful of that third one, like I mentioned before. He can sometimes jump on down and then he'll turn around and jump on back up again. But there you go, the help bar has disappeared, music faded out. Drunkard boss has lost interest in us again, even though we killed his little ninja buddy friend in front of him. Alright, so here we go. This is what I should have done before when I killed the ninja guy straight away. I could have done this straight away. So we'll deliver the first freebie death blow. And yeah, now we don't have to deal with any bow and arrow guys or his little ninjutsu buddy. It's just me and you, drunkard, with one death blow left on him. Now I currently have an attack power of 10 and a vitality of 18. Alright, so now all we're going to do now is chip away at his health. Now I'm actually using the Itsumonji skill here and later on you'll see that I'll change to the Mortal Blade. So all we're doing is we're going to play Chases and wait for him to make a move. And when he does make a move, we run on in and get some freebie hits on him. Chipping away at his health and um, basically the lower his health, the higher his uh, poise bar is going to be easily to be filled up. So while he takes a swig at his drink, is another safe way to do a hit on him. And uh, basically just run around, wait for him to make a move, and then run on in, do a few free whacks on him. Now, as I mentioned before, I was using the Itchamonji skill, 
And then I gave up on that and decided to resort to the Mortal Blade. Here we go. So we've got a bit of spirit there. So at least we can get some distance in on him with the Mortal Blade. As you can see there, very effective. Look at the amount of health that brings down. The poise bar going up. So same tactic. Just run around, wait for him to make a move, and then run on him and show him your Mortal Blade. Now I didn't run away in time there. So he grabbed me and stomped me on the ground like rag doll. Don't worry, I'm still okay. I'm just healing up. So again, just chip away at his health. Now I've run out of spirit there, so I didn't get this distance on that mortal blade, and you've got to watch out for that grab of his too. So you've got to run up a lot closer now if you don't have any spirit left. Even though there's none left, the mortal blade still works. As you can see, it's very effective on his health bar, bringing up the poise bar. So as you can see, that's what we're doing in this round. Just wait for him, bait him to make a move, and then run on in and get two swings on him with the mortal blade or whatever skill you like using and um, run on back, heal up if you need to. But as you can see, the tactic here was to take out his ninja buddy, run away, and sneak on back to the drum card and take out a freebie death blow on him. And that way you can just focus on the drum card boss alone with just one death blow point left on him without any bow and arrow dude shooting arrows at you or a little ninjutsu dude chasing you around. So basically, we're going to continue playing chases, wait for them to make a move and run on in and we've delivered that final depth blow, there we go. Anyway, I hope this video helps you in your game progression and if it does then hey, please like and subscribe and there'll be more to come.